What's up everybody in YouTube land? How y'all been? I've been fine. Hope y'all are too. We're going to do a quick, uh, I don't know, like a wiring type experiment, you could say. I ran my bus wire underneath the layout. I'm using a 14 gauge wire. It's stranded. It's uh, what I had out in the garage. So I spent some money. already got it. Hopefully it'll work. I've been watching a few of your videos out there on uh, people are using the... I always called them saddle connections, but I believe they're called suitcase connections. And uh, I'm not thrilled with them myself. It's probably the better way to go, but and some of them strip the wire and then they'll solder their feeder on and run it to a distribution block. But my soldering skills, I tried getting better at it when I was building three-wheelers and go-karts and things like that, but I'm just not good at soldering. So instead of the suitcase connector, I'm going to run a test because I'm going to use the Kato power wires. It's a 24. So it's a little smaller. I think everybody's using 22s for their feeders, but the Kato is 24. So I'm going to try, instead of the suitcase connectors, I'm going to try what's called a T-tap. It clamshells around it. And then you, at the end of it, you plug in a blade. So I'm going to show you a quick test to see if everything works out. And maybe you guys can give me some of your opinions on it. So here we go. Let me know. Now that I got you over my messy bench, got a little disorganized. So these, well not that one, these two. That's what everybody's been using to connect their bus line to their DCC uh, track. Now you know the uh, red is for 22 to 18 AWG. The blue is for 16 to 14 AWG. And you have a yellow for 12 through 10. Most people know the bigger the number, the smaller the wire. My layout is basically going to be 14 gauge because it's not that big. So, problem I have with these, my 14 gauge wire, I'm using stranded wire, not solid wire. I already had, uh, I'm using a blue and a white one, but I already had two spools in my arsenal out in the garage, so I spend more money. Solid is probably better for a connection, but stranded will be okay. Problem I don't, the problem I have with these and why I don't like them is sometimes they are a bear to get in there. I mean, that slot is so small. Then you got to give it all your might to get it in there. Sometimes you got to pry it open. You can go up to the yellow one, but the metal gap sometimes is bigger. The other problem I have with these, it takes the same exact gauge wire. And then you would have to run this to maybe a uh, distribution block or solder the smaller wire. So I'm going to go with the Kato power wire. Let's see, I think I got one of them. So I'm going to use this Kato power wire right here. And the red one, like I said, is for 22 to 18. Well, the Kato is 24, so I'm just going to run a test here because I'm going to use T-taps. You may have already seen these. This is a T-tap. It's basically the same as the saddle, except I like this one because it has a better advantage to it. So let's give this a test. Basically, you just put your wire in there just like you would do the saddle, but this one closes down around it like you know it's like a little clamshell and get your wire in there so this is your power wire on your bus get it in there show pair of pliers just push it till it closes just like your saddles it locks in you can see the little lock right there 
So the one thing I like about these is you can use the spade terminals. They plug in right at the end. Oops. They plug right in. So if you don't want that anymore, you want a bigger wire, you can just pull the spade out. Goes right in the end of it. So I want to test it with the 24 because the red is for the 22. Well, the 24 is a little smaller wire. So let's give this a test. These are, I'm not going to use the bare blades like this. I'm going to use the encased blades. So let's see if the wire will work in there. I already stripped this end here. Let's see if we can uh, use these here. Might be too small. I'll crimp it a couple times just in case. Now it feels pretty solid in there. I mean, a lot of people like to solder. Solder is definitely the best connection you're going to get. So we'll give this a shot. I need to strip this end here so I can get some power to it. Alright. So my power wire, I'm just using a 12 volt, not 12 volt. I'm using uh, an old uh, MRC Tech 2 from the old DC days. I'm just going to power that with this right now. So there's my power wire. We will plug in the blade right in the end like that. Nope, I missed it. Oops. This one's a little out of whack. Probably because I crimped it. Goes right in the slot. Ha! <laughs> keep missing it. I can't see it. Getting too old. Alright, there it goes. Plugs right in the end. So, there's my power wire. I'm using an old uh, motorcycle turn signal, a little 12 volt bulb. We'll see what we get. So power wires come from power pack. Plug into the T. We'll flip her on here. Hey, we got power. Off, on. Yeah. And then if I decide I don't want that, I don't have to fight cutting the wire off these, the saddle ones. Like I said, you got to take the same gauge wire in here. And then jump this to something else. Whereas I can just have my plugs already made up after I drop them through the layout and stick them in here. And there we go, lights back on. Plus, I think they're a lot easier to mess with than these things. Let me get another one here. Show you there. See, it's just one. My screwdriver at. Right? So you just got the one that crimps the wire, and then through the slot, the blade goes in the end of here. So you can unplug it, plug it all you want. This stays on your main bus. You can just unplug it. Plug it back in. There you go. Unplug. Plug it back in. I don't know. Maybe some of you have used these before. Every video I see on YouTube is based on these suitcase connectors. I do see some people struggle with them. But yeah, they're, they're sometimes tough to get in there. It's People are in there busting their knuckles on top of their layout. You just It's a pain. And you got to actually have the same size wire to run a feeder off of it. This one I can just, with, like I said, I'm using the Kato. So I can just run it straight down to that. And there you go. T.
T-taps. Well, there you go. I hope this uh, was somewhat informative for you. Because like I said, the casing on this wire, it's a little thick. It doesn't even work in the yellow one very well. You got the yellow, the blue, and the red, as I said. It's pretty rough to get in that one, too. And, you know, the idea of trying to splice down from this to a smaller wire, it's just like, what's the point? I just plug it right in. But if you guys have ever used T-taps and experienced problems with it, because, you know, it does, you know, you guys know DCC. It's got to send that digital signal around. So if it's lacking on that, you know, if you have experience with them, let me know. I hate to get on that layout all Lumpy Jenkins and Caddy Wumpus, get all messed up, and I got to tear stuff out and do it again. Hope you guys liked it. I hope it was informative. If not anything else, maybe you can use it on something else. Maybe you want to put a light on your car and you T-tap that bad boy on there. But yeah, smash that like button. You know, if it was great, wasn't great, but smash the like one. All right, you guys have a good one. Pappy out.